Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about the new Snapdragon 888 uh, SoC that was just announced. And if you recall guys, the current uh, flagship uh, uh, SoC that we use on Android phones by Qualcomm is the Snapdragon 865. So next, the logical move should have been 875, but uh, Qualcomm has named this one as the Snapdragon 888 not even 875 or 885 but 888 and i think so they did this to showcase that they have improved this chipset quite a bit and uh, the big highlights is that it's still an eight core processor uh, but again it's using the new arm cortex x1 chip as the prime chip uh, again it has some uh, major improvements in the new uh, dsp it has also the gpu that's the adreno 660 gpu is supposed to be almost about 35 percent faster that's a big uh, uh, percentage leap i would say and also the isp this is the first isp that's a triple isp we have seen a dual uh, uh, isp that's the image signal processor but this one has the world's first triple isp so let's break it down uh, the various components of this chip and let's have a closer look because of course, we will be finding the this Snapdragon 888 uh, with the new flagship Android smartphones that will be coming in 2021. So let's look at it. And uh, as you can see, this first image, uh, this gives you an idea about the chip itself. And if you notice this red color, uh, we have this new ARM Cortex X1 chip. And if you compare it with the older Snapdragon 865, there also actually we had one a higher clocked uh, chip that was known as the prime core. Here, this is the prime core, but this is a uh, very different. This is the first time actually uh, we are seeing an ARM Cortex X1 chip by Qualcomm. And if you notice, uh, uh, this is clocked at uh, slightly higher compared to the other core that's it's clocked at 2.84 gigahertz, but we were expecting about three gigahertz, but still at 2.84. But the big improvement is that, and if you notice, uh, here, the cache is actually a massive uh, one uh, megabyte L2 cache. And if we compare this with the Snapdragon 865, uh, there the prime core, if I remember, had just 512 uh, kilobits of cache. So the cache has doubled. And you might say, what is this? This is actually important. Uh, with processors, the data has to move a lot fast. Otherwise, the processor will sit idle. Hence, by doubling the cache, I think so they are able to migrate this. So hopefully, in heavy applications, it will be a lot faster. And in fact, if if you uh, look at the other cores uh, first let me broadly divide it's actually a octa core that's eight core chip again divided into various uh, we have four high performance cores. the first one is that prime core as i've already mentioned that's based on the arm cortex x1 then we also have three powerful cores they're not clocked as high as the prime core they're clocked at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and this is based on the new arm cortex a78 and again uh, the cache is here also doubled guys it's uh, 512 kilobytes of l2 cache uh, with the earlier snapdragon 865 if i recall it was just 256 here so here also the cache has doubled so uh, you should see a huge improvements and also moving to the architecture this is based on the new arm cortex a78 if you recall the snapdragon 865 was arm cortex a77 so here uh, we should see an improvement about 15 to 20 percent on this one uh, moving to the uh, low performance cores that are energy efficient cores, we are still having the ARM Cortex A55. Here we don't see an improvement. In fact, last couple of generations, uh, Qualcomm has been doing the same thing. So the ARM Cortex A55 is the same. Now moving to another uh, big deal is that if you recall, uh, the Snapdragon 865 did not have an integrated modem and these vendors had to actually purchase it separately. Uh, that is the X55. Uh, this is not the case with earlier Qualcomm chips and that's the reason one of the reasons that many vendors said that the Snapdragon 865 chip is a lot more expensive. Now uh, Qualcomm is back putting the what do you say modem within this chip itself and uh, they have gone with the new uh, X60 modem. This is the third generation of their 5G modem and has improvements like new uh, carrier aggregation and if you look at this image uh, as you can see uh, they say that as it's now a part of the SOC itself it will consume a lot less power if you recall uh, obviously we don't have millimeter wave here in India uh, but many western youtubers used to complain that on 5G specifically on millimeter wave uh, the battery life of these smartphones was just not that good uh, Qualcomm says that now with this x60 chip uh, uh, with the Snapdragon 888, uh, even for the millimeter wave, uh, the battery life hit 
won't be that much and in fact uh, it also has improvements to the sub 6 gigahertz uh, 5g band this is actually very important because across the world uh, most uh, uh what do you say 5g vendors are opting for the sub 6 gigahertz and they have uh, what do you say uh, carrier aggregation and mixed match of tdd and fdd with the 6 gigahertz band so again a uh, huge improvement for 5g implementation and now as this is a part of the soc I am hoping that the overall power consumption should be a lot better for the X60 modem. Uh, now, uh, another thing is that uh, uh, with this X60, they have also improved the Wi-Fi. Yes, we have Wi-Fi 6 even on the Snapdragon uh, 865. But guys, if you don't recall, it does not support the uh, next generation Wi-Fi 6E, that is Wi-Fi 6E Enhanced. That's going to come out in 2021. And this actually supports the Wi-Fi 6E and they claim speeds up to about 3.6 gigabits. Uh, we will be seeing a lot uh, of what do you say, new devices in 2021 with Wi-Fi 6. This, uh, this is Enhanced Wi-Fi 6. I'm also waiting. So this chipset does support that. And now uh, let's move to the, uh, what do you say, uh, DSP. That's the new hexagon 780 dsp on this one and as you can see from the image here also qualcomm says that they did huge improvements and uh, in terms of uh, trillions of operations that it's calculated via that they claim that the snapdragon 855 did about 15 uh, uh, trillion operations uh, per second uh, whereas this 888 will be capable of doing about 36 so significantly improved i would say and because of this they said that they have made huge improvements in AI operations they claim about 43 percent uh, faster in AI operations and these days it's becoming a lot important all this AI operations uh, new cameras uses it a lot of other features actually use that so it will accelerate a lot of things and in fact in terms of AI that is the TensorFlow uh, uh, and all those things they are saying that you can get about 2x the speed and one important thing is that they say that this uh, uh, new hexagon uh, uh, that is the DSP is more power efficient it's almost three times more power efficient compared to their older uh, counterparts and this is a huge for a mobile phone and they say that it's about 3x what do you say uh, more efficient per watt so hopefully this should help uh, get us more battery life for the same operations and in fact for the shared memory that is required for these ai operations they say that it, they have improved it 16 times that's huge so AI operation, TensorFlow and all those things, uh, AI computing and all those things that are happening a lot on these smartphones will be a lot faster. And now we are getting the new Adreno 660 GPU and Qualcomm claims that this is about 35% faster. This is a huge leap guys, but generally uh, with every generation we see a performance leap of anywhere about 15 to 20%, but here they are telling about 35% improvement uh, for the GPU. At the same time, it is 20% more power efficient. So again, I feel in terms of the, uh, what do you say, GPU, uh, Qualcomm has done a great uh, job. And uh, this also supports LPDDR5. This is not new. Even the older 865 did support LPDDR5. Not a lot of vendors used it. Most of them use the DD LPDDR4. But if I remember, the ROG Phone 3 used the LPDDR5. But here, the LPDDR5 can go up to 3200 megahertz and Qualcomm say that if uh, OEM uh, actually bundles LPDDR5 they should see significant improvement so let's see uh, what uh, we get and now let's also move to the ISP that's the image signaling processor and we have the spectra 580 ISP with this one and this is actually we have seen dual ISPs but this is the first triple ISP that we are seeing and uh, Qualcomm says this is the first in the world and they say that uh, the chipset is capable of using all the three ISP at the same time so what can we do let's say if your smartphone has three cameras let's say a regular one wide angle and zoom uh, technically speaking uh, when you click a picture it can shoot uh, capture all the data from all the three cameras simultaneously and they also say it can shoot uh, 4k videos simultaneously from three different cameras so this opens up a lot of uh, what do you say opportunities it'll be interesting to see how these smartphone vendors take advantage of this triple isp and uh, yes it should also help in regular photography and qualcomm specifically says that this new uh, 580 isp also improves the performance in low light so uh, hopefully uh, what do you say camera performance in low light will improve uh, with this new isp uh, so to sum it up i would say 
Qualcomm has made a lot of improvements in various parts of the SOC. It's not like they just did the work on one part. That's why I think so they are calling it the Snapdragon 888 instead of the Snapdragon 875. And I would say uh, if we need to summarize this, uh, this is the first implementation of the Cortex X1 chip. Uh, that is the prime core that they're using. It'll be interesting to see how it performs because it's supposed to be a very powerful uh, chip. Uh, and uh, the combination with this ARM um, Cortex A78. Also, as they have now moved to 5 nanometer process, uh, it should be a lot more efficient. If you recall, the Snapdragon 865 was based on 7 nanometer process from TSCM. Now, actually, they have moved to 5 nanometer, and this is with the Samsung fabrication. Samsung is actually manufacturing it on the 5 nanometer node. Also, uh, we should see general improvements because of the enhanced AI, as they have told, it has improved drastically and I'm also curious to see what these various smartphone vendors will do with the camera because now they have the option of that triple uh, ISP uh, for example uh, I think so some vendors uh, will play around with that uh, Samsung does that single take so they can do a lot more things I'm also curious to see what Vivo and Oppo will do because those uh, vendors actually do concentrate a lot on camera so we'll be seeing a lot of improvements in the camera area with this one and uh, I would say in GP performance, as we said, uh, you should see about 35% improvement. So again, high-end gaming at the highest graphics setting should not be an issue. So overall, yes, it's an improvement. Uh, we don't, didn't, don't have any benchmarks and stuff, but I think so by early 2021, we should be seeing flagship Android smartphones with the Snapdragon 888 chipset. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of a battery savings do we get. Uh, that is a question that we'll know only when we get hands-on with this new smartphones that are coming with this one. But what do you guys think about the Snapdragon 888 chipset? Do let me know in the comment section uh, below. And guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll try to answer it. Also, do follow me on Twitter because these days I'm uh, spending a lot of time on Twitter. That's at the rate Kiki Ranjit. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.